Hi, my name is Dr. Sarah Salas, and I work and teach in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Kentucky here in Lexington, Kentucky. I also treat patients with essential tremor and help them remain as functional as possible with the assistance of therapy, so this is a subject close to my heart. That is my goal to provide you with options for dealing with essential tremor. The first thing that is important to any clinical scenario or problem is to obtain an accurate history and physical from the individual or their family members. I start by determining whether my patient is right or left-handed, which is especially important when dealing with upper extremity tremors. An examination determines the type of tremor the person is experiencing, as well as the parts of the body that are affected by tremor. I look for confirmation that the tremors are worse with activity and are typically not present at rest. It is important to reconfirm the diagnosis of essential tremor and to rule out other possible causes of tremor, such as side effects of medications, thyroid disease, or other movement disorders that can sometimes be mistaken for essential tremor. I usually make a point to review the person's current medication to make certain that the medications are not exacerbating the tremors. I will also review what, if any, medications the person has been prescribed for the treatment of their essential tremor. From a practitioner's perspective, it is important to know if the medications that have been used or trialed for the treatment of essential tremor cause or have caused any adverse side effects such as tiredness, confusion, dizziness, or other unwanted symptoms. As part of the evaluation process, it is my goal to determine how much the tremors impact the person's daily life, such as being able to participate in basic activities of daily living, such as bathing, dressing, eating, grooming, and talking. I try to understand the impact of the tremor on the person's ability to work and participate in their usual hobbies. I also need to understand the social impact of the essential tremor on the person's daily life. For example, I have some patients that will refuse to eat in public due to their uncontrolled tremors. As a clinician, I'm able to track the tremors over time by using the tremor rating scale. One of the first things I review with my patients is to make sure they reduce or eliminate caffeine from their diet since we know there is a relationship with caffeine use and tremors. I will also ask my patients whether they use any over-the-counter products that contain ephedrine or pseudoephedrine that one can find in cold products. Diet and weight reduction products sometimes contain muhong, which is another ingredient that can increase the risk of tremor. Essentially, it is really important to reduce any medications or over-the-counter products that can lead to an increase in heart rate since this can exacerbate tremor. There is a relationship between stress and anxiety and the worsening of tremors. Individuals sometimes will avoid anxiety-provoking situations due to the fear of escalating tremors. Things that have been shown to be helpful may include medications, massage, breathing techniques, exercise, psychological counseling, biofeedback, and relaxation training. Some of these modalities can be short-lived, but others, such as learning, breathing, and relaxation techniques, are ones that the individual could use when placed into a stressful situation. For some individuals with an underlying anxiety disorder separate from their essential tremor, medications might be helpful to not only treat their anxiety, but also lessen the impact on their tremor. Some people with essential tremor also have tremors affecting their voice, which can be very troublesome to them and can make it challenging for others to understand them. Medications may improve voice tremors, but individuals might also want to consider a trial of speech therapy to see if they can learn to compensate for their voice tremors. Lee Silverman Voice Therapy is one program that has been successful. In some cases, botulinum toxin A injections have been used to alleviate voice tremors. Although this procedure is felt to be safe, side effects might cause some breathiness of voice, hoarseness, or swallowing difficulties, all of which are transient and will eventually go away. People who respond well to Botox might require repeat injections to maintain control of the voice tremor and its worsening. Head tremors can be very difficult to deal with, both cosmetically as well as physically. They can be especially bothersome while driving. For some people, wearing a soft collar helps to reduce the amplitude of the tremor. Neck collars are meant to be worn when the person's tremor is at its worst or when they have a specific task to accomplish, which is hindered by the head bobbing. Again, for some, botulinum toxin A injected into the muscles of the neck has been shown to help. Once again, even though this is a safe procedure, individuals may develop transient weakness, neck pain, and difficulty swallowing as a result of the injections. Upper extremity tremors can be very frustrating and task-limiting, especially with progression and worsening of the tremor. In addition to the review and consideration of medications, 
it is important to determine whether the upper extremity tremors are inhibiting the person's ability to feed themselves and if they are experiencing weight loss as a result of their upper extremity tremor. If weight loss is noted, it is important for the person to also meet with a dietitian to review other dietary options that do not require hand dexterity for self-feeding, such as inclusion of high-protein shakes in the diet and the use of straws to avoid having to lift a cup to the mouth. Once upper extremity tremors have been identified, it is also important for the patient to undergo an evaluation by an occupational therapist to determine appropriate adaptive equipment to help dampen tremors. These may include weighted utensils, wrist weights, built-up pens, which can be as simple as putting foam around a regular pen, or electric toothbrushes and razors, which are heavier and give some weight support. Other therapies can include learning new ways to complete a task with consideration given to the upper extremity tremor or learning to use the unaffected limb to accomplish the task. Other ways to compensate for the upper extremity tremor can include a weighted button hook or selection of shirts and pants without buttons. Computer users may benefit from an adapted mouse as pictured here or the use of voice recognition systems if the person does not have voice tremors. Adapting to printing rather than cursive writing can help since this makes the person put more weight on the writing instrument which can decrease the tremor. Learning to rest the forearm on a table while completing a task eliminates stress on the forearm and may help as well. If conservative measures fail in the treatment of or the compensation for essential tremor, persons may consider botulinum toxin A injections, especially into the forearm muscles. This procedure can be very helpful for some individuals, but can be limited by pain at the injection sites, possible forearm and hand grip weakness, and possible numbness, all of which are transient in effect. For those individuals with tremors involving the trunk and legs, it is important to assess the risk of falls both in the home as well as their community. It is important to consider physical therapy for general strengthening, gait training, and the assessment of appropriate equipment such as a cane, walker, or wheelchair for long-distance mobility. It is extremely important to determine how essential tremor is affecting a person's life, not only from a physical standpoint, but also from a psychosocial perspective. It is crucial to provide support and possible counseling for those that are dealing with depression and social isolation as a result of their tremors. There is a role for medications such as antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications if essential tremor is affecting a person's mental well-being. Deep brain stimulation, or DBS, may be considered for those individuals with disabling essential tremor who are not responsive to medications or therapy. DBS has shown the best results for extremity tremors, although we have seen some improvements in voice and head tremors as well. DBS is not a destructive procedure, but it is not to be taken lightly. DBS is a surgical procedure where a lead is implanted into the thalamus, the part of the brain. Once the lead is in place, the person will require repeated programming sessions to achieve good effect and tremor control. DBS has been shown to improve tremor control and allows for lessening or discontinuation of medications used for control of essential tremor. It often improves activities of daily living as well as overall quality of life. I should note that deep brain stimulation is not a cure for essential tremor, and after many years with essential tremor, some individuals will lose the full therapeutic effect of the deep brain stimulator since the disease process of essential tremor is still continuing. I hope I have been able to provide you with some useful information on rehabilitation options for essential tremor. Thank you for watching.